Hi, this is Chris from the Axis Dev Team. Uh, I've been working on a new core, uh, rendering core for Axis for the last nine months or so. Um, and the aim of the new core is um, to really make Axis a lot faster. Um, so, what you're seeing here is uh, new core, this window here, um, and it's running at uh, about 40 frames a second. So it's fairly interactive. Um, it's running on a Core 2 Duo uh, with two threads. Okay, um, so the example isn't very exciting at all, um, but it's actually a lot more going on than, than you realize because Axis is a, a true micro polygon renderer. So um, there's actually a large number of micro polygons that we're producing here. And um, you can see that if I just uh, put an interesting displacement shader. So I just edited the rib file, um, which it's reading in. Um, um, so I've put an interesting displacement shader which just uh, pushes uh, the surface along the normal um, and you can see that we really got uh, we really do have a large amount of geometry here that we're rendering um, we can render it uh, at more or less uh, well certainly interactive rates here um, uh, so I guess I can change can change things like uh, just change the displacement uh, parameters a little bit uh, so we can um, get more or less bumps, um, or we can change the amplitude. Oops. Um, so I'll just uh, change the amplitude. <coughs> um, yeah. So certainly we can um, we can make some inter interesting shapes this way. Um, so um, just out of just for interest, um, I'll show you a little bit more of the detail. Uh, I'll show you the actual grids that we're generating. Um, so what you're seeing here is um, uh, each one of these little uh, coloured squares is a grid of micro polygons um, and inside each grid you've got uh, approximately 256 micro polygons. Um, so yeah, so you can see that um, we're doing adaptive tessellation and as you zoom out um, the grids get uh, well stay the same size in screen space. Um, so that basically means that you only pay for what you use. Um, so um, yeah, that, that's that's quite nice. So um, you can also see the polygons. So I'll show you the polygons here. Um, uh, there you go. Uh, actually, I'll go back to the original uh, no displacement case. Uh, um, so here's the original uh, no displacement case, and you can see that really um, the polygons are taking up uh, about one pixel. Each little coloured dot here is a micro polygon. Um, and even if you zoom out, um, well, if you zoom out, you uh, generate a lot less micro polygons. Okay, so that's about it for the first example, I think. Let's go on to the next one. Um, so this is this is a rib file containing some uh, hair-like or wire-like geometry which I generated. Um, it's uh, running um, uh, there's about oh there's about five thousand uh, uh, pieces of geometry here. Um, and these are actually just uh, bilinear patches which have had a displacement shader applied to them. So at this stage, Newcore only supports bilinear patches for geometry because um, we're trying to get all of the sampling and uh, filtering stages and stuff <coughs> worked out before we uh, go adding a lot more geometry types. Okay, so um, I'll just I'll just change the parameters of this displacement shader uh, a little as well, uh, just for fun. Um, so let's say that we change it um, to really up the frequency on this, this helix-like uh, shader. Um, so yeah, you can see that we can really get some interesting geometry, um, and it's still rendering at more or less uh, interactive frame rates. Um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so on to the next example. So this one's quite an interesting example. Um, this is a fractal known as a Menga sponge, um, and uh, there's really quite a lot of geometry here. Um, one interesting thing, because it's a fractal, we can uh, up the amount of geometry, just render to a higher level. So that was at level. This is at level three. Now, if I've I've changed the rib file to do level four, 
Um, so this is uh, four sort of levels of, of subdivision, if you like. Um, and uh, at, at this at level four, <coughs> we have about one million faces uh, here. Um, but um, the reason we can render render uh, such a large number of faces uh, just on the CPU um, is that we actually have a, a, a <coughs> clever occlusion algorithm. Um, so you're actually only rendering the stuff that you, you see in front there. It's basically culling away all of the, the geometry which is hidden behind. Um, and I can even go up to level 5 um, just for interest's sake. Uh, it's got a little bit slow now. So this isn't really so interactive anymore. Um, but certainly if you had a faster machine um, um, it would be better, and we seem to see that the, the scale, the uh, code scales reasonably well with the number of, of threads, even though it's the threading code is quite new. Um, so yeah, certainly with a four-core machine, you'd expect to, this to run a lot faster. Um, okay, I think that's about it for that example. Uh, on to the final example. Uh, so this is a little animation that Paul did uh, using Blender, and it's been exported. Um, to rib format, so it's just reading in one um, reading in one rib file uh, per frame. Um, so we can stop it at any stage and inspect inspect what we've got here. Um, yeah, so that's about it uh, for the moment. Um, we've got uh, we've got a fair bit more to do, um, but as you can see, we've really really coming along. Um, so yeah, it's quite exciting.